Hello to those regular subscribers that are used to true crime. This is going to be something a little bit different, although it still does come down to something similar, uh, predation, um, you know, attacking uh, victims, that kind of thing. Uh, I want to tell you just a little story about what happened in the garden today. So there's a little Cape Robin chick that has been trying to grow up, trying to go out into the world. And it's the only second, it's only the second baby bird of that kind that, that I've ever had in this garden. They are insectivores. They, they sort of nest in a, in this sort of foliage and they, they sort of, you know, above the ground. But as soon as the chick is able to fly, it sort of scrambles around the undergrowth. And I was quite surprised, despite getting my baby dog, that that the bird decided to kind of go ahead and start a family. And I did predict that there was going to be a situation where Timmy was going to sort of sniffle out the the baby bird and you can actually see in this picture that the bird is sort of trapped it sort of was trying to escape through that that netting that mesh and kind of couldn't get through it kind of got stuck in it just before I took this photo he was actually I couldn't quite see what was going on but it looked like Timmy had him in his mouth actually and um, I did shout at the dog he let him go, and the next thing, when I went back to to the, the gate, the bird was gone. And then a moment later, he was sort of hopping around, and then he got through that that sort of tear in the mesh on the left. He sort of pushed himself through there, and then he was on the other side. So I'm hoping that he didn't come to any permanent harm, but a few minutes after I took this photo, there was a black cat in the on the other side and the Cape Robin was making an alarm call and it's just quite amazing to see the the Cape Robin bird which I'll show you in a moment the adult which has got like quite a bright orange chest they're beautiful little birds was actually standing on the driveway about two to three meters in front of the cat basically posturing the only other animal that I've, I've ever seen that do that is a, I mean, in terms of first hand, is a clownfish, where the small little fish would sort of face off against you, uh, invading his sort of patch of coral. This tiny little fish, the size of your pinky, would sort of stand his ground <laughs> in the water, of course. And um, so, so anyway, I, d I don't know at this point whether the baby bird has survived um, but he definitely has his work cut out for him with predators both in my own home in the garden and also lots of cats lurking about. Um, the parents are very vigilant and they obviously trying to chaperone the baby bird but it can't be easy. The bird uh, can't fly very far and gets himself into all sorts of difficulties and dangers on a daily basis. So there's the other picture that I put up recently uh, of the baby and this is also after an encounter with Timmy. The next picture is one from a previous summer and this is uh, also Cape Robin, a much younger bird um, and this one I think did okay. In fact this one was actually um, being raised while I actually was babysitting a cat and managed to survive that experience. So anyway, there's a picture of the Cape Robin, not the best picture, but you can see they've got quite quite specific features. And then I thought while I'm here, I will just take you through a couple of other photos that I've taken. It's There's a mouse bird. They are called mouse birds because they've got very long tails. They, those are actually fruit eaters. The next picture is a photo of a foxglove, which uh, Vincent van Gogh in his painting Dr. Gash, Portrait of Dr. Gachet has got foxgloves on like an orange table in the foreground. The next picture is of a little girl kind of um, 
kind of a neighbor who told me that there were baby bush doves nesting in the fork of an oak tree. And you can't see it in the picture, but there was a, there's a kind of a big Labrador that is sort of has the, the run of the, the yard be beneath. And that's why the, the bush doves feel that it's, that's a safe spot because the, the dog is there chasing all the cats away. The next picture is a picture of a weaver. Um, these birds have got incredible energy. They weave, um, every nest they weave is a female that, that is part of the sort of harem. And um, they often have say maybe three, four, five nests. Anyway, these birds have got, are incredibly active. Everything they do very, very quickly. Uh, it's like they're running after their own tails. They're, they're always very, very busy. And there's a picture of a butterfly from the garden. The next picture is of a, I think it's a Malachite sunbird. That wasn't taken where I live. That was actually taken on the garden route in South Africa. And um, I'm quite happy with that photo. I think it's kind of not a bad photo. And then the, the final photo is just sort of a view through some pot plants into the garden. That was actually taken in winter. I'm kind of working quite hard on uh, and just narrating an audio book that I've written. I'm just trying to get it, get it done. So not a long video today. I just thought I would quickly just share this with you guys, and I will let you know whether whether I see the the baby chick again. I don't know whether, as I said, I don't know whether it actually survived its encounter today, either with Timmy or the cat afterwards, but. Um, you can often tell through the calls of the parents and the call of the chick whether they are around. So I will let you know, try and take some photos with my other camera if I can spot him. So, so I'll let you guys know. Thanks for listening and I'll see you guys next time.